Morning, that health dude here just chatting about the archetypes. So we have the four survival archetypes. So we have the child, the victim, the prostitute, and the saboteur. And so the prostitute, what is the prostitute? Ultimately, I would say that most of us prostitute ourselves out. Now, let me talk a little bit about this. For especially for empaths who struggle with boundaries, we will constantly do things for others at the expense of ourselves. So we will prostitute our energy out um, because on a deeper level, there's something that we don't really feel worthy um, to just be ourselves and to, to create that boundary. And so we will prostitute ourselves out in work. We will prostitute ourselves out in our time. We will prostitute ourselves out in kind of giving all our energy to people and having nothing left for ourselves. And so this is a level of boundaries and also a level of... Um, it's a level of really self-worth. So, for example, if you were in a dating pool and you kind of lowered your standards, it's kind of, you know, the old story of the nightclub lights where <laughs> it turns on and there's uh, you see the two beings and, you know, they're like monsters because they're like all that's left, right? But sometimes you'll, you'll grab that monster <laughs> and take them home. And I'm not saying that you guys do this, but... We do lower our standards in many areas of our lives and it's because, one, we don't maybe believe that what we dream about and what we desire is actually available and so we just settle. So we settle for the job. We settle for the relationship because we uh, just think, well, that's as good as it's going to get, right? We settle for the income. Um, all these things that we settle for in life, there's we're actually prostituting ourselves out and leeching energy out. And it's a very, very uh, predominant thing in society because hundreds of years ago, a certain group of beings got together and said, you know what, let's get people to work. Uh, back in the day, we didn't go to jobs and we didn't have to pay to have a roof over our head. We worked in community. We we foraged and we hunted around our area. We didn't have to you know, earn an income just to provide food and put a roof over our head, right? That's just not the way we worked. That, that system was created. And so it actually goes against universal law and it actually goes against the rhythm of most of our bodies. Like we were not designed to sit eight hours a day inside. That's just not, that's prostituting our life force out to the company goals. <laughs> um, if those goals are aligned with you and you believe in that, then maybe you're not prostituting yourself out. However, if you're just doing it for the paycheck, you, there is a le level of prostitution that's happening. And so what we do is we continue this for years and years and years and years and years until eventually our soul, our you can call it higher self, God, whatever it is, intervenes and goes, you know what? You are so off track. We need some type of life experience to shake you up. And because you haven't been listening to the subtle cues, you haven't even been listening to the screaming. And to be honest, most people's bodies are screaming. They are physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually exhausted. And the reason is, is because they're prostituting themselves out, just not in one area, in every single area. There's there's energy leaks just kind of going everywhere, right? And so eventually a crisis point hits and that crisis point shakes us to our core. It's literally somebody like, wake the fuck up. And it could be disease. It could be the loss of somebody that you care about. It could be financial stress it could be an accident um there, there's so many things it could be but generally it's either as i said a death of somebody that you love um an accident of either you or somebody that you love an illness um some type of financial thing 
or some type of breakup, whether that be a romantic breakup, a friendship breakup, you know, some type of core unit split. And it wakes you up out of your slumber because you were off track. And so when we kind of look into the prostitute archetype, this is something that I work with a lot with clients. And it's also something I've done in my, my past. I've lowered my standards. I've lowered the standards of people I work with. I've lowered the standards of, you know, intimate partners or relationships. We've all done it. We're not perfect, right? Um, lowered our standards of business dealings. Um, we do it quite consistently. And eventually what happens, it, it comes back to bite you in the butt because the universe is showing you that that's not the right path for you. And so what I work with with clients, and the first thing that we do is we actually get clear on their dream. What's your one love? What's your biggest vision for your life? Because guess what? This is it. You get to live life and then you're not here anymore, right? So why not make it the best version that you can possibly think of? And And when we do get clear on this dream, then we start to figure out where the, the <laughs> where you're leeching the energy. How do we bring life force back in? Where are the sabotage patterns coming from? And how do we stop all this leeching of energy? And for a lot of people, they really, really struggle with putting out the boundaries and putting up their identity because, especially in Australia, we have what's called tall poppy syndrome, which is if you're shining, everyone's like, oh, don't shine come back down to the same level as us. And this actually comes from back in the day when we had uh, the colonization, uh, which was you had the the convicts and say I was a smart ass and I was misbehaving. And probably in a past life, I probably was um, <laughs> because I still do it today. But I was a convict and I was misbehaving. They could punish me or they could punish everybody else. And if they punished everybody else, then everybody else was the one who said, come on, Nick, let's bring it down a little bit. Let's just not go crazy, right? So actually the society keeps us small um, because it's programmed into our DNA. It's programmed into our nervous system. And so a lot of the reasons why people struggle with change is because yeah, you might read a book, you might go to some personal development thing, but it's a full nervous system uh, regulation. Uh, it's a systematic, on many, many deep levels, a phys you know, just stuff in our physical body, but then you've also got your emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies you know, around your aura around you. So all these things are things that factor in, and they've got uh, blockages, stories, uh, layers of thick, stuck, uh, blocked, all these type of areas that need to be unlocked. And so it takes time because the body isn't used to that amount of energy flow. It isn't used to that amount of connection. It isn't used to that amount of awesomeness because it's been dulled for such a long period of time, right? So it's like, for example, having something that's been running on 12 volts and then you put 250 volts into it. If you don't do it um, properly, it's going to fry. And this is why you see a lot of people um, struggle with the long-term change. They'll do something like a rapid detox. Their body will go into rapid shock and then they won't be able to uh, continue because they've just gone from 12 volt to 250 volt, blown their circuit, and now they're like everything's fried. And so they've got to re-put themselves back together. Whereas if you do things and you're very clear with and intentional and it's grounded, you can actually get, it's, it's like the momentum happens, right? So, and what happens is at the beginning, you've got to take the first step, right? So momentum is slow. But then what happens is the momentum gets faster and faster and faster. And because things are layered, Although the first maybe three months might have been a little bit slow, the next 20 years is really, really fast. Whereas people that might do something which, which is really rapid at the beginning for, say, 30 days, they get something that happens, but then they have to recover. So the next 20 years is really, really slow. Because what happens is that people do something like that and talking about the prostitute, they do something that actually goes against what their body needs. 
they do a shock value. And, you know, shock things are kind of good from time to time to wake you up, but they're not ideal, right? Because we don't need... Change doesn't need to be painful. Change doesn't need to be excruciating. Change doesn't need to be not enjoyable, right? Um, so when you do that, it's kind of going against your your worth by by punishing yourself. And so people punish themselves through a detox or they punish themselves through like some type of boot camp, which motivates them and they have someone motivating them, but they're not listening to their own body. And so they might they need a combination of the two. The, so they might need a little bit of motivation to get started, a little bit of guidance to get started, but that guidance should always be bringing you back to yourself so that you're not prostituting yourself out. So question is, where are you prostituting yourself out? Right, there's, we as Czech practitioners, we look at the four doctors, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Movement and Dr. Happiness. Dr. Happiness being the chief physician. Most people are not following what actually truly makes them happy. So therefore, they're prostituting themselves out. And guess what? If you're not doing what makes you happy, you can never 100% be yourself, even to the ones that you love. They never fully, truly get to see you. They only get to see the version of you that is ultimately selling their soul. And we don't want to do that anymore because we're in a bit of a spiritual war right now. So we need to reclaim who we are so we can stand in our truth and we can stand in our power. Anyways, so that's a little bit about the prostitute archetype. It's, as I said, all throughout society and we can shift this and we can change this. Um, there's three other archetypes which I'll do videos on, which is the child, the victim and the saboteur. Um, but the prostitute, we have to start to create boundaries and we have to look into our own self-worth. Look at the areas that you know that you're doing things. And it's not that you um, shouldn't do things because we, we don't want to have a certain list of rules. Most of the time, what we should be doing is what society is saying we shouldn't be doing. Like our heart's saying this, but society's like, oh, you shouldn't do that. And you're listening to society. And a lot of the time, it's actually... Um, what you it's what you want what your heart desires it's not what you should be doing it's not what you shouldn't be doing it's like what the actual hell do you want this is your life this is your body this is your vessel this is your journey for no better word this is your life what do you actually want now this is something that i help people through with my program called the comebacks the comeback which is 6 weeks where we focus on number 1 your dream. Number two, we focus on getting your energy and vitality levels up because you need energy to shift. Um, you need energy to make change. If you don't have energy, you're just going to fizzle out and burn out. Um, and three, then we look at those sabotage patterns and we start to look at things like the prostitute archetype and the child archetype. And we look at what your sabotage patterns are, um, what, what your you know, the saboteur, the child, the, the victim, the prostitute. We're looking at these patterns to see where you are being dishonest to yourself, where you have the kind of spiritual blocks, where you have the stories, uh, the memes, the, uh, the nervous system, uh, the nervous system, what's the word? The, the, I'll explain. I can't remember the exact word, but going from A to B, it always goes the quickest and easiest route. And so we've, we've created a neural pathway. And we've created a neural pathway that says, if I do this, I'm going to get this result. Um, and if I try anything different, I'm going to fail, for example. We'll always go this way because this way is um, certain death, risk, a loss, pain, right? And so that's the belief. Maybe that belief used to be true, but it's not anymore for a lot of people. So then we have to we have to create the new neural pathway, which creates a little bit of effort because we have to actually kind of, you know, it's like creating a track. You've got to get the, the machete. In, you're in the bush and there's, there's no track. You can go down the one that's already there or you can go down and create a new one. And that takes a little bit of guidance and support a lot of the time because we don't know what we don't know. It's not that you're... I'm better than you or anything like that. It's just 
this is what I'm skilled at. This is what I'm good at. And also, if you have your vision and vantage point here, and my vision and vantage point is over here, I have a different perspective. I have a different angle. So I can see things that you might not be able to see. Anyways, that's what I work with people on. If you're interested, just reach out. Love you all. Keep being awesome.